Hey guys, Chris from Nichols Retirement Empire. Today, another installment of Why Teachers Quit. This one is about no control. No control. I saw a survey. It was a teacher survey from 2015. It was done by the uh, Department of Education in Georgia. In that survey, what they found, and this is something I've been talking about in, in a lot of these videos over the years, is that 44% of the teachers in the state of Georgia uh, in 2015, which was, which was a few years back, were uh, leaving the profession, okay? In other words, within five years, they were gonna leave the profession. Now, I don't know if that included teachers that were retiring or not, but that is a high percentage. If 44% are leaving the profession within five years, that's an issue. And the state has been uh, kind of scrambling for years and years to make sure that we have enough teachers. And I'm not going to go through all the results, but one result that I want to talk about today, the number three reason that people chose for why they were leaving had to do with the level of participation in decisions related to the profession. Uh, all these decisions are being made for what teachers do in their classrooms and in their job, and they are not involved. Now, a lot of you people uh, may have jobs where you don't need, you know, your job is, is, is kind of dictated to you and you have to do it in a certain way and you don't need a level of freedom. I just need to know what I do and I do this and I don't need to be making decisions. I just need to do my job. Um, that's not how teaching works. Uh, and I'm going to read a, a quote. Um, one of the teachers wrote in, and, and this is, <laughs> this kind of sums it up. They, uh, they're taking this survey and the person said, I could continue for days and days about why this is absurd, but I'm sure nothing will be done and none of you really care why teachers are so unhappy or care that we quit. You are just putting on a show to make us think that you want to get to the bottom of the problem. I will be extremely shocked if I see any positive changes come from this survey. And that teacher was a teacher for over 20 years in an elementary school. Usually teachers that have a little bit less of a, of a, of a sunny disposition are, are secondary school teachers. That was an elementary school teacher <laughs> that said that. So this is the time of year uh, when everybody's you know about to get their contracts and they have to make a decision, am I going to stay? And if you're in a position where you feel you have no control, that may help, you know, help people decide, am I going to stay in this profession? So I'm going to talk about a couple of things here. I'm just going to go back and, and kind of compare when I started and, and now, okay, as far as the, the amount of control. You expect to have a level of control because here's the thing, is, is you need to have control over your classroom uh, and you need to have control over how and what you teach. I mean, because it is a, an intellectual practice, okay? Um, you're, you're passing knowledge. You are trying to persuade minds. I mean, you, you are, you know, the, the, the art or the skill, however you want to say it, of teaching requires a certain, you know, set of abilities. So not everybody can do it. And so it is the kind of job where you need some kind of freedom, okay? You need some kind of, you know, intellectual freedom as a teacher. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened when I started teaching. This is straight out of college in 1989, okay? And I had no experience whatsoever teaching other than student teaching. We didn't go out into the schools like, like they do now. We didn't have a lot of practicum experience and stuff like that. We just had student teaching, and we learned how to make lesson plans. That's what I learned in college. So here's what happened. All right, when I started, I controlled how my room looked, what I had on the walls, what I put on the walls, all that stuff, I made all that decision by myself. Now, you're some of you, if you're not a teacher and you hear this, you're going to think, well, of course you did. But if you're a teacher now, this is some of this is going to blow your mind. I controlled how my room was set up, how it was organized, where the desk were, where my desk was, all that. What was on the whiteboard? We, I didn't have a whiteboard. I had a chalkboard. But what was on the board? Yeah, all that. I decided all that. I decided what I taught. That, that's right. I decided what I taught. We had a set of standards. There was a set of standards for the state. And it told you what all you needed to go over. And nobody checked 
to see if I went over all of that. I didn't even turn in lesson plans at all. I decided what I taught in my classroom every day. I had a curriculum and I tried to cover all of it and get to the end of the year and I decided how I did that. I decided how I taught it. I, I could do it any way I wanted to. If I wanted to, uh, you know, have the kids take notes and, and take a test or if I wanted the kids to do projects or if I wanted the kids to, I decided all of that every day. Now, they encouraged that we do uh, lesson plans and all that kind of stuff, but they didn't look at them, okay? And, and you had to plan some to do your job, you know, so, but anyway, I decided how I assessed their learning, all of it. I decided whether they had quizzes. I decided how, you know, I, I could just give them a grade if I wanted to, <laughs> for whatever. I mean, I had total control over how I assessed their learning. I made, uh, and that's right, I made my own test. I hand wrote my own test. I didn't have a bank of questions. I didn't have tests given to me. I didn't have, I, I literally made every single test that I gave my students. And that's the way it was back then. You made your test, you made your quizzes, you produced your projects, all that stuff. I didn't have, you know, all these things on, online that I could go get. I, we didn't have computers. We didn't have, you know, I made it all. I came up with it all. I had complete control over that. I controlled the discipline in my classroom. There was, there was not a discipline co, you know, we had rules, you know, for the school and, but there was not like a system of discipline that was set that we went through that would have, every teacher decided on their own how they were going to discipline their, their classroom, whether they were going to have uh, after school detentions, whether they were going to have lunch detention, whatever, um, they decided it. And if it got to the point where you had to send them to an administrator, you know, then the administrator would decide. But but once it got to the, they didn't expect you to send everything to them. Now, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, I decided I controlled the discipline. I controlled how much I contacted or if I contacted the parents. But we were not expected to call parents. We were not expected to make so many contacts with them and the parents didn't expect it either. I decided how I graded. I decided how I assigned grades and how the grades were calculated. I calculated my own grades. There was not, I didn't plug the numbers into a computer and the computer gave me a grade. You know, I literally, you know, went through and, you know, figured the grades. I calculated the grades by hand with a calculator. And I did all of that and, and there were more. That's just some of the things. Uh, but I did all of that all by myself, without help from another teacher, without help from an administrator, without help from any kind of guidebook or any kind of, I, did, I just did all of that. I came out of college and I just did all of that. Today, you would not have control over any of that, practically, in any place, anywhere in the United States. It, it has come to the point where they dictate so much to you so much that a teacher has to do from the way that you set up the classroom from the from what you have on the walls from your test like no teacher makes their own test no teacher makes their own you know no teacher figures out how they need to assess their students nobody does that anymore no teacher has just you know you handle the discipline no there's some kind of system for how the discipline works and everybody's got to follow it and you got to work I, we didn't have a team of teachers that worked together we were all on our own now that being said, there are things about that that were, you know, that, that weren't good. But there's things about today that aren't good. And, you know, somewhere in the middle, I mean, teachers have to feel like they have some kind of control. Uh, they feel, and, and according to this survey, it says they, in their written responses, they felt like that they had a lack of support from anyone that they uh, had a general feeling of no control in or outside of the classroom. You know, why are you teaching if the most important thing that happens is not the actual teaching and learning? Because all these people that make all these decisions, whether they're for the whether they work for the national government or the state or some university, have all this data and. All, None of that matters if the students in the classroom 
and the teachers in the classroom aren't teaching and learning. That's the only thing, that, you know, the most important thing in all this process is in the actual classroom where I am teaching your child and your child is supposed to be learning. And we have gotten so far away from that. It started with, well, we don't, the, the government didn't trust the states to be teaching what they needed to be teaching. So the government kind of dictated, here's what we want you to do. And then the states didn't trust the counties uh, or the school districts that, that they were, the students were really learning or that they were teaching what they needed to teach. So they started telling them what to do. And then the next thing you know, it's like, well, we really can't trust you to assess whether your students really learned what we're telling you to teach them. So we're gonna give you some tests to find out. And then everybody takes this test and that way we can compare and see if everybody's really learning. So now they start dictating a test to you. And then the next thing you know, I mean, you, you're not even making your own test anymore. And you have people making decisions that have nothing to do or have never been involved in the process of teaching in a classroom. Uh, you have people that work on, you know, they're on state legislatures and they get to make laws about what's supposed to happen in a classroom and in a school. And they have all this say so. And then schools have to do what they say. Uh, you have people in, in universities and colleges that have never taught in, in a public school setting. You have people that are state level or, or, or district level administrators that haven't been inside a classroom uh, teaching in 20, 25 years. And they're making decisions. They're so far removed from what is actually happening and what students are like today and what education is like today in a classroom and they're just making all these decisions and they're all dictating it all comes from the top down and everybody feels it. I mean, when I was an administrator, I didn't get to do what I wanted to do. Everything I did was, was something I had to do because the federal government said it or the state government said it or the district told me to do it. You know, I spent all this time doing things that were not about learning and were not about teaching and were not about controlling the classroom or controlling the school. People that go into teaching are usually the kind of people that want control. They want to go in there and be in control of those kids and teach them, and they don't get to do that. They're told how to do it, and they don't need to be told how to do it. And what happens now, toward the end of my career, what I saw more and more is young teachers coming to me and asking me what to do, every little thing. What do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And what we've done is we've trained all these teachers to be dependent on everybody else. I, if I had gone into my principal's office and walked in there and said, well, what do I need to do about, uh, you know, if the kids are acting up or the kids aren't doing their work? If I had gone in there and asked him that, he would have looked at me like I had three eyes. I would have never dreamed of going and asking my principal what I need to do about anything. I didn't even ask the other teacher, I just did it. Now, we've, we've kind of crippled a lot of the people coming out of these, out of these uh, schools now that they depend on you just to tell them every single little thing to do. They have no, you know, concept of I can do what I want. And they can't, I guess they shouldn't have that concept because they can't. So. I believe that's one of the big reasons why a lot of people leave teaching. And, um, and it is a shame that, that teachers now have, you know, very, very little control over what happens in a, in a classroom where they're being held responsible for the students learning and where they can be fired if the students are not learning to the level that somebody else thinks they should be learning. And they, and, and they have no control over how they do it. So another reason for why teachers quit. No control. Thanks for watching Nichols Retirement Empire. Thanks again for all you do if you're a teacher. Thanks for, for, for doing the job that needs to be done and doing it despite all of these issues.